Okay, calm down. Just, wh why are you so nervous? Just fucking calm down. You've done everything. Yet even though after muttering to myself, it doesn't help, I'm still shitting bricks. I don't know why though. I've done everything I can. I spent the past three months training my ass off, pushing myself past the point of exhaustion, knowing that when I wake up, it's the same fucking routine all over again. <sighs> Shit, man. I've literally done anything and everything Daisuke could think of for tomorrow. Boxing, jiu-jitsu, judo, muay thai, wrestling, yoga, cooking, his laundry, fucking anything he could think of. <sighs> Shit, man. However, all that blood-soaked, painstaking work is void if I lose tomorrow. Everything will have been pointless if I not only beat, but utterly humiliate some of the toughest fighters Bryce has to throw at me. Fuck. Stop it. <sighs> Can't think like this. Yeah, I mutter some encouragement to myself as I walk over to the toilet to spat some water in my face. <sighs> However, I want to catch a glimpse of my reflection. Can't help but smirk at how stupid I look right now. Oh, you guys haven't noticed. Since I have to come across as a cocky dick, Daisuke had the brilliant idea of making me look the part. So aside from the ridiculous skull bandana he has me wear across my mouth, he's given me a mohawk and streaked my white hair black. Get this, he says it goes with my ring name. Ready for this one? My ring name is White Evil. Like that? Exactly. What the fuck kind of name is White Evil anyway? I sound like a fucking white supremacist. However, I realize it would be very hypocritical of me for giving Daisuke shit about bad ideas when this whole fucking plan was my own stupid brainchild. <sighs> Whatever. At this point, I've committed so much to this plan anyway, I'll do absolutely anything. If that means looking like a complete tool, then I'll be the worst fucking tool in the toolbox. Well, this analogy really fell apart, didn't it? Would it be the rustiest tool in the tool? Or maybe sharpest tool in the... Eva! Eva! Come on, Eva! Let me see, man! Freeze my balls off here! Randall's calling from outside, banging on the door. I open it, to find him grinning at me. Looking good, Evil. Please do not call me that when we're alone. Ah, uh, why so sour? Let's get past me on the shoulder as I scowl at him. Dude! The hard part is over. You finished your training and doing a damn good job during it. Yeah? Hell yeah. All that's left is to beat the top five motherfuckers in this motherfucking tough belt, man. Yeah. Shut up, Dickway. <laughs> Vesca slaps him in the back of the head. Then pulls out an envelope out of his pocket. We've got a letter. Congratulations. It's for you, wise ass. Daisuke smirks, handing it to me. Me? From Mia. Mia? I'm about to break the wax seal, but I noticed it's already been opened. Come on, what would you have done? Uh, probably the same thing. Not having heard from her in months, I thought she'd found her family and forgotten about me. And even if she hadn't lived up to her promise of checking up on Ayame? Really guys, I was just... I really just would have been happy if she'd found what she'd been looking for. I mean, yeah, that chick's been through a lot. I pick out the letter inside with deliberate calm, knowing full well that if I show the tiniest hint of enthusiasm, Randall's gonna barrage me with his endless onslaught of Hey, Theo. How are you? Hope you haven't gotten yourself too badly beaten up. I went to check up on your cousin. Ayame is fine and well. I told her I was a pen pal of yours, and since I moved to Winston to look for work, I decided to check up on you. We got to talking, and she offered me a position at Golden Books, in exchange for your old room, which stinks, by the way. So I've been living with her, keeping an eye on her condition. Her eyes seem fine, but she's still really broken up about you. One day she thinks you're dead, the other, she'll spend hours looking for you. I know what you're up to is really important, but your cousin really misses you. Try and finish up in Bryce and get back to us. As for my search, I went to that butchery where you saw my doppelganger 
but the place was completely derelict. I've tried to track down the previous owners. Some people in the area said I looked really familiar, so I'm not giving up just yet. Anyway, Aime is fine, and I'll make sure she stays that way. You take care of yourself, and don't get yourself killed or anything. Love, Mia. He's dated almost three months ago. Damned. Let her show her shit took its sweet ass time to get here. When I look up from the paper, I find Randall grinning at me. <laughs> nice. What? She will love me. I know what that means. <laughs> you are 16 for fuck's sake. All girls write like that. Yeah, dingus. But dude, seriously? Your girl really needs to work on her hand She's not my... She's not my girl. I wish I was a rock star living in a lake, driving in my house. Hey, this is Linda from Half Lives and you're listening to SOB. Dice get Randall and I strut into Bryce's biggest pub like we own the fucking place. The fact that all five guys I'm gonna face here doesn't appear to scare me. The reality that Jacques and his whole crew are even here doesn't appear to phase me. Honestly, I'm wetting myself. But the whole point of tonight is to convey insolence. To look like an arrogant dick who thinks he can clean his feet on anybody. I don't know if I can act the part with my mohawk waxed high and a menacing skull bandana covering the lower half of my face. I sure as shit looked the part. But that does not help how I feel. But Daisuke did assure me that tonight, at least, I will not be force fed my own teeth. Since my fight's scheduled tomorrow, the gangs have agreed to make sure that their tomato is ripe for the stomping, so to speak. So, at least for tonight, I'm not gonna get bruised up too badly. Daisuke leads us to a table near the bar and we park it. I'm swearing off pumpkin. Yesterday someone left one another outside our cave. I didn't see it and it... I just tripped onto it. Snake? Big fat motherfucker. Oh, it started to coil around my foot, but I kicked it away. Yeah, man, but not like you scream like a little bitch ass girl. <laughs> I grin underneath my hood. But jokes aside, everybody's been on edge about the hissing gourds. When Daisuke and I came across our first, we thought it was just some really stupid prank. But over the past few months, dozens of them have been cropping up everywhere. Toilets, bars, brothels. Although they've never been found in the cafeteria, Daisuke reckons the pumpkin soup has gotten a much chunkier texture since they have been cropping up. Huh. Can't argue with cheap protein. Bloody shame though. I loved pumpkins. But somebody had to go and ruin that for me. Rena, what the fuck is up with this guy's pumpkin fetish? Mm -hmm. Show for a while, just hanging out, you know, it, it's nice. And even though I'm not drinking, I'm really enjoying myself. However, Randall points at the bar. Ah, shit, man, what's going on there? Oh, for fuck's sake. A couple of stupid drunk thugs are trying to pick a fight with some kid. Shit, man, he can't be much younger than Randall. He's being smart, keeping a cool head, not letting them drag him into anything. It was like that day when I saw Randall getting stomped. If this gets physical, he's not gonna walk out of here. I see me like two step him and you know, just get him with the. It's none of our business. Just keep your head down and us out of it. Ah, come on, me. That's just right. But I know it sucks. But if I've learned one thing living in this forsaken country, it's that heroics are overrated. Nothing good ever comes from them. I know it sucks, I know it's a crappy notion, but that's exactly what it is. A notion. A stupid idea that always ends badly for whoever thinks that they can be a fucking hero. Anyway, I, there's no fucking way I'm getting involved in a brawl tonight. I've got to fight tomorrow, and the day after, and the day after, and the day after, and then, 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 and if I make it, the day after. That poor kid's gonna have to... Oh. Oh. Wait. Wait. No. 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 No way. No. No way. It, 
can't be him. But that's that white hair. That that's that's definitely him. What, what the fuck is he doing in Bryce? Suddenly, one of the thugs empties a mug of warm meat over his head. Poor kid. Wait, wh wh where are you going? Theo! Vesti calls after me, but I've already snapped, and I mean fucking snapped. Everything flashes red. I grab a bar and throw myself into the thick of the scuffle. What's this fool want? One of the bullies exclaims before he can finish his sentence. His teeth are lost into the car. I have lost it. Gone completely primal. I grab the mug and beat the guy bloody until even the cup is crumbled in my hands. Who the fuck does this guy think he is? He's the guy Gal's fighting tomorrow. No, he isn't. He won't be able to fight anyone by the time I'm done with him. Daisuke and Randall are still sitting in their seats, looking plumb, stupefied. Good. This isn't their fight. I hate for anyone to snatch my meat. I'm not even thinking rationally anymore. I just want their blood. How dare these fucking bastards lay a finger on him? I throw myself into the thick, firing off whatever ghost has in store. I don't know if it's the months I've been pushing myself through, or if it's just the fact that these guys are drunk out of their minds, but I am going through them like a hot samurai sword through butter. I grip my teeth, ignoring my cramped limbs and rifle off countless hooks, elbows, and knees, keeping endless shit faces at bay. Who's that? Who's that? Who's that fucker charging towards me? Is that, is that Hawkins? Yeah, I recognize him. He's the guy I'm supposed to be fighting tomorrow. Well, but he doesn't look like he's any mood to wait, and motherfucker, neither am I, bitch! Daisuke studied up on it. Told me he's a really good wrestler. And since I've just blitzkrieged through his boys with my striking, it's pretty fucking obvious what he's gonna do. The instant he gets close enough, he dies for my legs, hoping to drag the fight to the floor. However, I anticipate the power double and swiftly bring my leg up, crash and pop his face with my knee. Slumps to the floor, out cold, but before I can rejoice, something hard smashed me to the back of my head. As my senses return, I, I realize I'm on the floor. I spring to my feet, ball my fists, ready for more, begging for more. But everybody's just circled around me. I glance down at the stool leg that just smashed into my head and the unconscious guy holding him. I didn't hit him. And Randall isn't here anymore. And neither is he. Oh. <laughs> Daisuke. Daisuke, on the other hand, is on my six. That pipe in hand. Game face on. <laughs> Everybody's glaring at us, craving our blood. But their eyes pass over Daisuke, and their gaze drops. Any of you want to roll the dice with me? My friend growls, smashing his weapon into the floor, inviting a challenge. But nothing but angry glares respond. I didn't think so. We're going to- Hold up! I don't think so! Someone barks from the quiet corner of the large tavern. It's... Jason One. One of the finalists from Kungnam FC. The guy who lost to Raphael Jacques. Your friend? White Evil, whatever the fuck he's calling himself. I want to challenge him. You and me. Day after tomorrow. The White Evil's got enough fights lined up. Daisuke responds harshly, not taking his eyes off the thugs circled around us. <laughs> Isn't that a little bit redundant, considering he just knocked out three of his opponents? <laughs> That's a good point, one. Well done. But just one thing, why would I waste my time on Jacques sloppy seconds? I can see that touched the nerve, but before he can retort, someone's clapping cuts across him. You are something else, you Raphael the Lumber Jacques. He's sitting quietly at his table, surrounded by his boys who apparently have not participated in the festivities. Just because you beat these second-rate halfwits, you think you could stand with me? I would have thought that the other gangsters would have exploded at the blatant disrespect. They don't show it. If they aren't staring daggers at Daisuke and me, they keep their gazes lowered. Too afraid to offend Jacques. Oh, you think you're such a badass? Huh? Huh? Everybody's seen I can whip anybody around, including 
and your boy Reto. Why don't we sell this in front of everybody, huh? At Bronson's. If anyone gets another shot at Jacques, it's me. Fuck that. You had your chance, Bronson. You fucked it up. Back of the line. Aw, look at your little cat fight over me. <laughs> I'll tell you what. You two sell it in the ring. Yeah. And if I see any of you is worth my time, uh, we'll meet at Bronson's. And I'll kick the shit out of you. Free of charge. So what do you say, Evil? Day after tomorrow? Mosh Pit Arena? I just cleaned out this whole bar. One more guy shouldn't be a problem. Alright. See you then, Mom. This is Anna from the band Cellar Darling, and right now you're listening to SOB. What the hell is wrong with you? This is the third time you've dragged my ass into a fight. You know I live here, right? We've just exited the, the pub and you? left the hundreds of murderous the gazes fixed on us. Where is he? My eyes dart around the street, completely disregarding my manager's foul mood. Where's who? The kid! Daisuke! The kid! Where is he? Although Daisuke and I are bros, right now I could not give a flappy shit about anything he's got to say right now. There's only one thing on my mind. D... D, where is he? He should be with Randall. Okay, so he's safe. Okay, he's safe. Thank God. Thank God, but but what the hell is he doing in Bryce? Do you know him? As dice get points at the boy standing next to him, I swallow hard, unable to believe it. Yeah, that's my baby brother. It's Yomi. Although he's just six years younger than me, he's almost as tall. Shit, he must have grown half a foot since I last saw him. Yeah, little buddy, I mean, this is the why evil, man. This guy saved you! Randall's beaming, boasting to Yomi, who apparently still has not recognized me. I guess the whole gutter punk persona has thrown him off a little bit. Do I know you? <sighs> Don't recognize me? Yomi squints as I grin, approaching him and pulling the bandana off my face. Theo? <laughs> I'll see you later, Theo. Get some ice on your face. You need to stop the bruising. What about T? That's his brother, idiot. What? The, the one who's dying? Motherfucker! Theo? I'm here, little buddy. Although my ears are ringing, blood's dripping down the back of my head, and I'm as bruised as a fucking banana that's been used as a hacky sack. Right now, I cannot care less about any of that. I just continue to stand and grin at him like an idiot. Fuck me, man. I missed him. I missed him so much. You? Miss me? Hello, this is Iggy from the Nation Angels, and right now you're listening to SOB. Standing next to me, speaking to me. As we walk back to my apartment, I can't help but feel relieved. 
I haven't seen the kid in exactly 18 months. That's well over 500 days of constantly worrying whether the only thing I was fighting for was actually alive or not. And now that he's walking alongside me, looking perfectly healthy, it, it makes everything I've fought through seem worth it. So, how long have you been in Bryce? I got here this morning. I was on my way back to Winsen, but... The train broke down, so we stopped here for the night. It's supposed to leave in the morning, but I guess I'm staying here with you. But even though his appearance has evoked sheer elation, it's not without a slight sense of dread. But your treatment, it's, it's still supposed to be going on for another six months, right? It ended early. I don't buy that. Come on, Yomi. We paid for a two-year treatment. There's, there's no way it ended early. Did something happen? I see shame on Yomi's face as he tries to avoid my gaze. Kid, you can tell me anything. You know that, yeah? A fake smile is pasted on his face. I can tell he's on the brink of tears. It... failed. No, wait. No, but it, it can't have. The, the doctor said it could work. They promised it would work. I'm desperately praying that my worst fear hasn't just been confirmed. Praying that my only chance of saving Yomi hasn't just failed? But you look so much better now. It, it's bought me some time. He responds in a watery voice, walking faster so that he's a couple of paces ahead of me, hoping that I don't see the tears starting to run down his face, hoping that he doesn't see any tears he may have caused run down mine. How much? It's... Bought me some time. I don't know. It. It's gonna happen. For a moment, we walk in silence as the morbid reality catches up to me. So, everything up till now has been pointless? Maybe there might be three, maybe four years. Because the treatment, it did help. Yeah, it definitely helped. He's trying to finish on a more hopeful, self-assuring note, but his self-affirmation isn't enough. <sighs> How the fuck can it be? After everything we've been through, after everything we have done, how the hell am I supposed to settle for an expiration date stamped on my brother's forehead? My brother's breathing moistens. The mind dries. So this is the path I gotta walk. Oh, friend. We made sure that we would find you the best treatment we could find inside the octagon. If that isn't enough, then we'll just have to look outside it. What do you mean? We're leaving the octagon, Yomi. Leaving the octagon? Yeah, we're leaving the octagon. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get into this fight competition called Bronson's Baddest. If I win, we'll have enough money to buy Iamis, mine, and your way out of here. Yeah, as if it's gonna be that easy. But I'm not gonna let my chicken shit attitude keep my brother from sleeping at night. So don't you worry, okay? Your bony ass is stuck with me for a really long time. As we enter my apartment building and start climbing the steps, Yomi stares at me, uncertainly. Is this thing safe? Theo, you're not gonna get yourself into something stupid, are you? Damn. If anyone on this planet knows me, I point at my bruised face and try to look as bold and confident as possible. Yomi, look at my face. Look at this beautiful visage that was crafted by God himself. Do you really think I'd stick out my neck for you if there was a single chance that I might bruise this magnificent thing I call a face? Yomi wipes his eyes. Chuckling with the enthusiasm and naivete that only a little brother can exude. Okay, white evil. It's in your hands. However well I may have waved his fears, I, I can't disregard this overwhelming dread. Because my brother will die young and in my arms, blinded by breathless adoration, too young and gullible to comprehend how infeasible my plan to save him is. 
matters no matter how badly I try no matter how profusely I bleed I cannot succeed I cannot save him Theo oh it's it's Park Theo he starts climbing towards us he glances at my cut up face and grins looks like you've had quite an eventful night yeah <laughs> yeah a little bit um have you been sir <laughs> not too bad Who's your young friend? Oh, oh, sorry, uh, Professor Park. This is my little brother, Yomi. Yomi, this is his Professor Park. Park laughs, extending his hand to Yomi. Oh, I don't know about Professor. <laughs> it's not like your brother attends any of my classes. Nice to meet you. Are you Theo's neighbor? <laughs> oh, I'd never live in a god-awful place like this. I'm the landlord. He glances at his watch and fidgets. Ooh, I'm really sorry, Yomi, but I actually have to be somewhere right now. But I'll tell you what. I took Theo out to dinner the first time I met him. I think it's only fair I reciprocate the offer to you, too. Oh, sir, sir, you don't have to do that. Nonsense. Any brother of Theo's is a paying tenant of mine, right? Right, well, I'll see you then. Thank you again. Yeah. Good night. Night, boys. Nice guy. I nod, but widen my eyes and repeat what everybody has to say about Puck Jaewon. Uh, nice guy, but do not get on his bad side. Once we reach the third floor corridor, I pull the key out of my sock and unlock the door, subjecting his eyes to my two-room apartment. The two rooms being a toilet and a bedroom, kitchen, lounge, study, woodshop, antechamber, buttery, and sex pad. Welcome to Shea Infections. <clears throat> Yomi doesn't seem to care. Before I can give him somewhere to sleep, he crosses the room and parks his ass on my single bed. Hey, what the hell? He grins, snuggling into my blankets. So, where's Ame sleeping? Oh, fuck. I don't see any other oh, rooms shit. in here. <clears throat> yeah, sh she's not here. What? Is she in another apartment? I, I want to see her. No, I mean, she's in Winston. What do you mean she's in Winston? Look, I didn't have a choice. How long? I can't even meet his gaze. How long have you left her alone? Four months. Four months? Four freaking months? Theo, you you know she's going blind, right? How, how could you leave her alone? Yeah, she's, but... She's your sibling just as much as mine. How could you? Look, I didn't have a choice, all right? I got arrested and I got taken to Borstock. You got arrested? For what? Don't worry about that, it wasn't me. But, but I escaped and ended up here. It's too smart to experience with my bullshit. I'm a fucking moron to think that excuse is gonna fly with this guy. When? When what? When did you get here? Three months. Months? You should've known better, Theo. You think Ahmed's safe? She's barely 18. You think she can survive in Winston alone? I've got a friend living with her. She just... Yomi just shakes his head and rolls to the other side. This conversation over. It's happened before. You know, brothers fight. It's a fact. But this hurts. Maybe because Yomi has been screaming the same sentiment that's been chewing on my insides for months. I see myself once again. I grab a couple of shirts, find a soft patch of floor, and lie down. I know come tomorrow, Yomi and I will be fine. It's just... I thought... I thought I was being overly protective, worrying about Miami. I had convinced myself that I was doing the right thing for my family. I guess it's never that cut and dry, is it?